Hi there, I'm Dr. Mirdalis Diaz Ramirez, and this is the Design Your Physician Life podcast. Welcome to this very special episode brought to you by our Maxillor Mastermind, an exclusive mastermind for physician entrepreneurs. Today, we want to dedicate this episode to the younger physicians, the new wave of students who are coming to eventually take care of us. And we have a very special guest to do this, Dr. Miranda Phillips. She's actually from Elite Wealth and Wellness. She's a lifestyle medicine physician who has achieved financial freedom through real estate syndications, and she helps others to stay healthy while achieving their financial dreams. We have a great conversation with Dr. Phillips about creating financial freedom through passive income. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Design Your Physician Life podcast, where you will get excited about being a physician, learn the tools that can help boost your success, and great tips from successful doctors. Join us to unlock the keys to an amazing physician life. And now, here's your host, Dr. Mirdalis Diaz Ramirez. Well, thank you for coming to our podcast today. We have Dr. Miranda Phillips from Elite Wealth and Wellness with us. She's a lifestyle physician, medicine physician, and um, she has trained as an emergency physician and now has transitioned to this new uh, stage in her life. And she comes to us as the owner, along with her husband of Elite Wealth and Wellness, to talk to us a little bit about some financial topics we don't get to learn about in medical school. So welcome. Yeah, thank you so much, Mirada. This is good to be here. So tell us a little bit about your transition from being a physician into thinking a little bit more about the financial aspects of our careers, our, our lives. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, becoming a physician was always my dream. And I worked very, very hard to get there. And a lot of people helped me to get there. Um, but one of the things that I discovered once I was, quote, living the dream, end quote, as a lot of people say, uh, was I really started to learn what it meant to be earning an income and what the difference was between earned income and passive income. So what I learned is, you know, whenever you become a physician, it's a long road, right? I mean, it takes decades to get the education, to get the knowledge, to learn and practice and become a great physician. It takes a long time and life's happening all along the way. And so it, it feels like it was just, it seems like one day I just kind of woke up and my priorities had changed. I had a family around me and all of a sudden, you know, working nights, weekends and holidays, it didn't matter before, but suddenly it really mattered and, and not really to me as much as to my family. And so seeing the pain that my family was feeling of not having me at home, not being a mommy and a significant other, you know, made me feel pain. And then I started realizing the conflict that I was living, this life I was living, which is I did not have enough time to spend with my family and I was spending way too much time in medicine. So again, loving what I did, but realizing that I needed to be able to spend more time with my family. And without jumping into all the details, Basically, I was caught between a rock and a hard spot, and I couldn't back down as much as I needed to. I tried. I was unsuccessful, and I still wanted to be able to help people and impact people. I still had that passion and drive and fire inside of me, but I needed to do it in a very different way. And that was whenever I really started getting financially educated and discovering, like, you know, okay, if I want to do something different, I've got to be able to uphold my financial responsibilities, right? You get a lot of student loan debt and, you know, you get a house or a car or something. So I still needed money to come in, but I needed time. And that seemed like such a big conflict. And, and what I discovered though, was that if you learn what passive income is and you learn how to start building up passive income at an early age, then you won't ever find yourself in that rock in a hard place because you will have the means to have time anytime you need it, because you'll always have this backup of passive income streaming in. You won't be a slave to your earned income. What's passive income? Great question. So passive income is that income that you make when you're sleeping. You know, Warren Buffett says this a lot, right? Like either you learned how to make money in your sleep or you work till you die. Um, he says it very gracefully, but... But he's working till he's dying. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> he would, I think he would beg to differ. He says he's having a blast. He's just having fun. <laughs> He has fun making money, but, um, but yeah, you know, typically whenever you go to define the two, so passive income is that income that does come, it's called mailbox money is another fun way to say it. 
it's money that is being earned in the background. You don't have to go trade your time for it. So earned income, meaning you've got to earn it. You have to put in the time, the work, the energy, you know, the learning, whatever it is, like you are trading your time for money. That's how you get your earned income. But you, everyone, anyone who is earning an income also has the potential to take the excess of their earned income above what they have to have for expenses and start investing that to create passive income so that they have that backup stream of income if they ever need that time, especially, you know, quickly, emergently, like someone's in the hospital or someone's in a major car accident. I need to step away. I cannot trade my time for money, but I still need money to come in. You've got that backup stream of income. So to give a little bit of background, you've studied to become an emergency physician. Then now you are board certified not only on that, but also on lifestyle medicine. So you do have uh, patients that you see and you coach for that. And your husband is an orthopedic surgeon. So you are both involved with patient care. But at the same time, you've been able to develop some passive income that allows you for that freedom. So developing uh, financial freedom has allowed you to have time freedom, right? Correct. So can you tell us a little bit about financial freedom? Absolutely. So financial freedom can be defined in a bunch of different ways. The way that I'm going to define it is basically that whenever you've got enough passive income that it covers your expenses, you're financially free. If your expenses and you get to, you know, we as a, as humans get to decide what our expenses are going to be for the most part, we create them or we can get rid of them. We choose what our expenses are going to be. If we create enough passive income, that that passive income that comes in our mailbox will pay the expenses, then you're financially free. You don't necessarily have to work because you have enough to cover the expenses, right? So that would be the most common way to define financial freedom, um, at least the way that I refer to it. And then financial independence being one step beyond that. Financial independence being that you have not only are you covering your expenses, but you've got excess cash flow passively that's coming in above and beyond your expenses so that now you can grow your lifestyle, not based on earned income, but based on passive income. That all sounds great, but thinking about a student with so many loans and so many responsibilities, right? Uh, how can a student start this pathway early? Um, I think, and, and we've discussed this in, in the past, that people who work for joy uh, maybe achieve many more things than people who work for need, which is our concern here. So physicians who are usually financial free, uh, they're able to uh, devote more time or time in a different ways, in, in different meaningful ways to their patients and society. So I'm a student, right? And I'm going through this. I have all these loans. How, what can I do to, to start in this pathway? Yeah, it's a great question because um, I was someone that, you know, I at one point had $200,000 of student loan debt um, whenever I came out and of residency. And that's, that's average, right? Yeah. These days to come I out. I think so. Of and I see numbers higher than that, mm -hmm. much higher than yeah. that, yeah. Um, you know, now. But yeah, so I came out, you know, 200 k in debt. So, you know, I'm certainly... How long ago was that? That was um, in 2012. That was how much I had. And we're 2021. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I had graduated residency in 2012 and became an attending that year. And uh, that was what my highest note was. Yeah. 200K. Um, so the way, so as a student, I get asked this a lot actually by uh, medical students who, who know what I do. And, and then they ask me these questions very similarly. So the biggest thing is just to understand that passive income does exist and to understand that earned income can buy you passive income. Because as a student, especially as a medical student, I mean, you've got to really be devoting the majority of your time to learning medicine, right? I mean, that's where most of your time and attention is going to go. Let's just be real. But one thing that doesn't take hardly any time at all is learning how to get organized with your personal finances. And really what that means is having your own personal profit and loss statement. <clears throat> so treating your personal finances like a business will be the single best thing you can do for yourself ever in your whole life. And what I mean by that is you don't have to have an MBA. You don't have to go to business school. You don't have to have an accounting background or a finance background, but you need to understand what's coming in, any type of income that you're getting in and then understand profit. Yeah, that's your profit. Exactly. And then what's going out. Your loss. That's right. That's right. Your loss, which are also your expenses. Yes. And so having that statement and knowing what your bills are, that will help you keep tabs on what your expense, your annual expenses are. So if you can keep your um, 
financial sheet, your profit and loss statement, and then, you know, have your different rows that have like, um, you know, you'll have student loan payments that'll be on there as an expense. You'll have, you know, your utility bills, your, uh, maybe you have a car payment, groceries, maybe you have like some fun money you want to spend each month, but really putting together your own, let's say budget, budget's kind of the negative connotation of just getting organized. Um, but we talk about that in a much more, you know, advanced topics of finance, but let's just call it a budget for now. And just knowing what your expenses are, just keeping track of them and understanding that, you know, if you can keep control of your expenses while you're earning your income, then you can take the excess, the difference between what you're earning in your income versus what your expenses are, and you get to start investing that. So as a student, no, you really probably don't have any money to invest. Some people do, some still have come in across some students that actually do. Um, and if you do have money to invest in, yeah, you know, sure, play around a little bit and, you know, start asking the questions of how do I invest so that I get passive income? Because there's a lot of investments that will not give you passive income. So start asking the question of how do I get the passive income and how much passive income do I need? And the amount that you need, then that first hurdle, the financial freedom hurdle is how much are my expenses? If you start looking at that, even just as a medical student very early on, that's going to do a whole lot for you because then you'll look at that whenever you start making that bigger check. Residency, you know, you'll start making a check in residency, sure, but, you know, it's still kind of like peanuts. And But then when you transition resident to, you know, attending, huge difference. But if you have already trained yourself to look at your expenses and you already have trained yourself to think, I need to get enough passive income to cover my expenses and then I'm free, you know, anything that happens, any catastrophe, family, friend, otherwise that happens, I don't have to be trading my time for money. If you can get into that mindset and get yourself financially free right out of the gate, oh, it changes life, not only for physicians, but for their patients. Because just like you said, you know, whenever you are truly practicing medicine, because it is your choice and you're practicing on your own terms, because you're not financially dependent on that quote job, it's a totally different experience for you and your patients. So um, we go from no uh, income and all this debt as medical students to our first income, which is our, uh, our um, you know, our earned income in residency is not the best salary that we're going to have in our lives as physicians. Um, it's still a salary that, you know, many people make in the United States around that, that amount of, of money. So... Um, what disciplines do you think we should start to develop when we go from no income to a little bit of income and then we still have these debts and we want to uh, create some passive income for later? So you get like you get your first check and then, you know, your friends are maybe doing other things and they'd be making money all along and then you, you get checked, like you get paid. It's like, what do you do now? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Spend it all and have a party. Yeah, I have That's a check. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly, you know, what I will say is that whenever you do make these hurdles, there's, there's means for celebration, right? Graduate med school, like you shouldn't just like be all like, oh, I can't celebrate because I need to like save my money to go invest it. I mean, no, don't do that, right? So there are... Two main kinds of expenses. Um, there's recurring expenses and there's one-time expenses. And if you create a recurring expense that's going to recur every month and potentially for years, you're putting a pair of handcuffs on yourself if you're using earned income on that recurring expense. Because that means that you can't just walk away from that job anymore because now you've got recurring um, payments, recurring expenses that need, that's your financial responsibility. And so if you don't have passive income yet, then your earned income has to cover that. So if you make a weekend party, a recurring expense. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So don't drink too much on the weekend and then go sign some papers for, you know, a $200,000 boat that you're going to be making payments on for. Yeah. Don't do that. That's not what I would recommend. <laughs> but if you want to have a one-time party where you don't sign your life away, but you know, and you just go on like, the boat. Yeah, you can go rent on the it boat. That's for right. one weekend. Exactly. Go rent the boat for a weekend. Don't make it a recurring expense. And that one time expense, then totally fine. Like, you know, have that money, go spend that money. That's your one time expense. You don't have any obligations. You haven't put any handcuffs on. You know, you kind of paid it, paid it in full, boom, done. Those are the type of expenses that, you know, if you're going to celebrate whenever you're still earning an income, do the one time expense thing. But don't celebrate 
you know, by every going, weekend. Yeah, right. Exactly. Don't celebrate in a way that's going to cause you to have a recurring liability, you know, so that such that you'll have to use your earned income to keep paying those liabilities every month. What's a liability? Good question. So a liability basically is something that takes money out of your pocket. Um, so an asset is something that puts money in your pocket and we like assets. I love like assets. our homes or our homes assets. Oh my gosh. You're trying to open up a can of worms on that one. <laughs> <laughs> is the home an asset? Let me just, let me just pose one question back at anyone who asks me that question that I will pose back to them. I will say, well, is the home putting money into your pocket or is it taking money out of your pocket? So, and, and what I will also say is that there are some liabilities that we will choose to take on, you know, especially for. Uh, those of us that have kids or large families or, you know, it's not always practical to rent an apartment, you know, but you can rent houses as well. But again, you know, you choose your liability, but just know what you're choosing, right? Know that it's a liability. And so the liability takes money out of your pocket. The asset puts money into your pocket. Um, so, you know, hopefully that kind of answered your question as far as, um, you know, whenever you do transition into that residency type of paycheck, even though it's still a small paycheck, you know, yes, go celebrate, please go do some one-time celebrations. You've earned it at that point, but just be very cautious about what you choose to sign your name to. That's going to obligate you, you know, to, uh, recurring expenses and payment plans. Uh, if you are still making an earned income and haven't started investing money to go into an asset so that it will pay you passive income. So we are physicians here talking about money. That's, that's been for forever voodoo, right? Of um, yeah, physicians cannot talk about That's money. Right. That's right. Um, so how do you see, um, and, and we dabble a little bit on this already, but how do you see that developing financial education, uh, towards thinking about financial freedom and independence helps a student through the career and eventually that physician? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, Mirelalas and I'll, um, hopefully I'll answer it. If I don't, then definitely, um, shoot the question back at me again. But the biggest thing that I've learned in my own experience is that having that financial freedom, having that passive income, again, really helps you not ever feel like you're a slave to a system or that you're a slave to something you don't want to be a slave to. It is a privilege and an honor to take care of patients and to be a physician. Um, it's, it absolutely is 100%. I never go a day where I take that for granted and never have. There will become a time potentially, um, you know, where you feel like the cost that you're having to pay to help others is becoming higher than what you want it to be. And typically the cost is time, you know, so as physicians, is money your problem? Well, for some, yes, <laughs> believe it or not. Yes. Um, but you know, for a lot of physicians, it may not. The ones with the big boat and big and house that's right, and yeah. from the get go. <laughs> Yes. <clears throat> yeah. My husband and I, it's funny. We, we have this thing, uh, we say, we teach about, you know, being on the left side or the right side of a career. And the left side is basically, um, a person who's earned income is funding their lifestyle. And then we say a right sider is someone whose passive income is funding their lifestyle. And so uh, sometimes we'll see a Lamborghini, you know, go down the road and we're like left sider or right sider, you know, and we'll like place our bets. So like, Oh, I think it's this cause of this. Okay. Well, I think it's this cause of this, you know? And so it's kind of a funny game, but It really is. Um, it's a principal point, which is, you know, there's um, people that look very wealthy, but if you look at their balance sheet and their profit and loss statement for their own personal finances, then they're probably poorer than you um, because they're living this life of huge luxury, but they have huge liabilities. I know physicians that make a ton of money, higher than the average physician salary, and they live paycheck to paycheck. Some are even worse off than that. Some rely on distributions, you know, as owners in their physician group to make ends meet. And so it's not a position you ever want to be in. And the biggest problem with that position more than anything is that if something happens and they need to step away from that job, they cannot. Right. And so I'm reminded of, um, so I was in a position in the ER where I was hiring, I had the, well, could also fire, unfortunately, but also was hiring physicians. And so I had a friend from my med school class that actually called me up and she was like, Miranda, she's like, I'm hoping you can help me. She said, I'm working in an ER. I'm working for a medical director. Um, that I told, you know, I needed time off because something happened with my son. It was unexpected. He was in the hospital. And as his mommy, I needed to be there and I needed time off. And I literally needed a month off because he was in the hospital for a month and I could not get it. And I couldn't walk away from that job either because my income was needed in our household. And your health insurance. Yeah, that, yeah, health insurance, everything, right? 
And so she was like, I do not want to work for this person anymore. I need your help. I heard that, you know, you, you have the capacity to hire and I heard you're looking for physicians. And so I was able to bring her in under our wing and we got her hired. And what I thought about in her position was the fact that as a mommy, you know, this unexpected potential tragedy happens and you've got to walk away. Maybe you're not a mommy, maybe you're a daddy and, you know, but you're a significant other, like you are a daughter, you're a son, you're whatever. And you need to get away just to be able to take care of your family, but you can't like, that's not a position you ever want to be in. And it's not one you ever planned to be in, but whenever it happens, it's devastating. And so you can, you can already start fixing that problem and never have to be in that situation by starting to earn that passive income as early as possible. And then on the flip side, so first of all, you know, you've got that time. If you need it, walk away from that job if you have to. But then also knowing there's something that's very different. When I became financially free and I walked into the ER for another shift, knowing that I could walk away from it anytime I wanted to, it was different. It felt different to me. And I stayed. I actually had been financially free um, longer, you know, than what, like I didn't leave immediately. Like I stayed and I was enjoying it. And the patient interactions were different because it was really my choice to be there. I no longer felt like, oh, it's another, man, this EMR and your eight to five, or actually in your case was like nights, weekends and holidays, right? <laughs> oh, another night, another weekend, another holiday, you know, this crazy EMR and, and nursing staff shortages and like all this stuff. So going, like going back, like uh, as physicians, you know, We want, um, we want happy physicians. Uh, we're, we're trying to inspire the, the future physicians. And in, in achieving this career, we, we do a lot of studying. We up, do a lot of sacrifices. And then to be able to go through that and, and live a happy life and then be at the end, even though you are making so much money, living check to check, we're making a lot of sacrifices to, to be a physician. We have studied, we have missed parties and, and family reunions and trips and things like that. To study so much and then live paycheck to paycheck as a physician, regardless of our income, you can make so much, but still live like that. And then not being able to walk out when you need it for yourself or somebody else in your family is really hard to take. So that's what we're trying to teach the new wave of students, you know? we can be of service to others and we can achieve financial freedom and independence, not at the expense of others, but at the service of others where we can also take care of ourselves. And if that in a, unexpected, we're humans, you know, emergencies are going to happen to us the same way they happen to any other people. So we should try to get ready for that, right? Oh, absolutely. 100%. And, and not to discount too the fact that, you know, we work that hard to be of service to others that we don't deserve to live a life of conflict either. And what I mean by that is, you know, we shouldn't be going to work and thinking to ourselves, well, who takes priority, my patients or my son? Which one is higher priority? Because they both want my time and I'm choosing where I put my time right now. Like, who should have to answer that question? No one should. And So that's a life of conflict. And we don't want to live that. As physicians, we give our best to our patients and we want to give our best to our families. And sometimes one is at the expense of the other, or so we feel. But the truth is, it doesn't have to be that way. And the truth is that we don't have to live a life of conflict and we can have a fully integrated, conflict free life that's all working towards the exact same goal, which is. We take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. And that's not just health-wise and it's not just time-wise, but it's financial-wise also. Awesome. Let's summarize a little bit of concepts going back uh, for our listeners. So we're going to first start with first thing, when you're a student, your P&L, profit and loss statement, right? Absolutely. Keep those personal finances organized. That's like the number one thing you can do as a student. Number two. Learn about some finance, uh, passive income ways, right? Yes. If you do have a little bit of play money and you want to start tinkering around with investing, then just remember to focus on how do I create passive income through investing. And number three, we didn't call it that like that, but uh, they, some people call it leaving it under your means, basically spending less than what you make. We discuss it as uh, having some recurrent or some one-time expenses. 
Absolutely. Yes. And, and, you know, when, in my courses, I talk to people about investable income, which is just increase your investable income, which is the difference between your expenses and what you're bringing home such that when you have that goal of financial freedom and you know, it's because I want to live life on my own terms. I don't want to be dependent on anyone for anything. I want to walk away when I want to walk away. I want to live conflict free. When you know what you're working for, it changes the way you view your finances and it changes the way you look at expenses and you will be happy to not be collecting those recurring expenses because you're going to want to have those expenses leaned out. You're still going to want to do fun things, you know, and go do that. Go do date night, spend some money on your spouse. Don't be stingy. All right. Do the fun things, but make them one-time expenses so that you can on the next month, take that money as excess above your typical expenses and go invest that to create the passive income. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Miranda Phillips, for being here. If our listeners want to learn more about you, where can they find you? It's been a pleasure, Miranda. Anytime, I always love being on your show. Um, if someone wants to reach out to me, they can either find me through our website, www.elitewealthandwellness.com, all spelled out, or they can email me at Miranda, M-I-R-A-N-D-A, at elitewealthandwellness.com. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Stay tuned for more of our Design Your Physician Life podcast, which was brought to you today by our Maxillary Mastermind, an exclusive mastermind for physician entrepreneurs. We will continue to bring you useful resources to develop your physician entrepreneur life like we did today with Dr. Miranda Phillips from Elite Wealth and Wellness. Her website is actually EliteWealthAndWellness.com. Thank you for joining us. We hope you had a great time like we did. It doesn't matter if you're a student, whatever stage of life you're in, your physician life, just come and join us. Share the joy, share with your friends and family. Please subscribe, like us, give us five stars, and we'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. Please remember that design is not providing specific financial, medical, or career advice. Our only intent is to stimulate your appetite for growth by sharing our experience and those of our speakers, coaches, and guests. Your personal growth and success will be unique to your circumstances and your hard work. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to seeing you next week.